Well guys, we all knew this day would come eventually, but after 68 episodes, it's time to say goodbye. To the old keyhole base in the overworld, as today we're going to fully rely on our brand new base and pour over the rest of the systems and infrastructure that we have here. I maybe had some of you guys a little bit worried there, like, goodbye to what exactly, three? <laughs> yeah, goodbye to the old base, farewell. But um, yeah, we're moving full time into this brand new base as... Last episode, we tackled the final big project, which was to move auto crafting. Since the last episode, I have been doing some aesthetic improvements. I put a roof on this place. And as you can see here, it's almost an identical roof to the one we have in the processing area and also in chemistry on the opposite side. But I do think it helps to tie in with the design language and the theme that we have going on here. I also went ahead and replaced the vanilla signs with advanced information panels to let us know which type of machine it is and which process the specific multi-block is handling, which I think is a big improvement over the oak vanilla signs. So yeah, the objective today is to fill out the rest of auto crafting to give us the basic functionality to craft all of the core components we need at this stage of the game and finish moving over the rest of the infrastructure from the overworld. So what do we still have to move over? Well, we still have a macerator here which handles on-demand maceration recipes. We still have a chemical bath. We still have drilling fluid automation which we send to the miners. We still have a forge hammer. We still have a chicken. We still have some cotton machines. And then finally through here, we still have all the items we need to craft various circuits or some of the items we need to craft circuits. So we have to be able to make all of these things in auto crafting. So I was just making up some more fortune books here, hence the, the glasses, I forgot about these things. And so after finishing some of the quests in IV, mainly the platinum line quests, we also have one here for the polarizer, which is not gonna give us a loot bag. We'll still claim the reward though, but we should have, I think seven IV loot bags. Yeah, and I did already pre-craft the motors, which we need to combine with the fortune book. And this gives us a slightly higher chance at some better loot from the loot bags, so let's go ahead and pull seven of these. What are we hoping for here? I think I'm basically just hoping for all the motors back and uh, things to craft IV machines, as that's the bulk of the cost, actually, for all these multi-blocks, which we need to move the infrastructure over. So I'm hoping for IV stuff, but I wouldn't complain at some ender chests or ender tanks. Or some Naquada ore that actually does help us. Some tungsten cable, advanced circuit boards, platinum cable, Lapitron chips, that's not too useful. Borosilicate glass, that's useless. We did get two more ender tanks though, that's pretty good. Unfortunately, none of what we were looking for, but regardless, let's start with our mixer today, mixing drilling fluid. So over here we send stone dust, we send lubricant, and we send water into this mixer, which gives us drilling fluid, and that is sent into an ender tank and then distributed into various multi-block miners on other planets. So the lubricant we have automated already, I think in this distillation tower here, which is turning creosote oil into lubricant. So all we have to do is set up the mixer. And I seem to remember that we have a spare IV mixer, which we can upgrade here into the industrial mixing machine. And so yeah, it should just be a matter of plugging this in. I think we're gonna stack it on top of this one. What sort of recipe times are we looking at here? Um, 3.2 seconds LV for 5 buckets, so we don't need to run this, I mean, we don't need a super high voltage tier on this machine. And this one is already running at HV, I think. So for all of these machines today, I want to make sure that we have recipes and we're able to auto-craft it for the future. Because there's still a few things, like the maintenance hatch, for example, which I've been crafting manually. And I think it's about time that we add recipes for all this, so we're going to have to move this muffler hatch over to the side somewhere. And then we should be able to wall shear this multi-block. Oh, that's right, and there's also titanium turbine casing in the middle of this multi-block for some reason. But we do have the recipe for this one. All right, awesome, so we're almost there. Let's do the maintenance on this machine. And I just noticed by accident that we're out of soldering alloy wire. And I also noticed that we're out of channels here as well, so we have, I think, two spare on this P2P. Um, yeah, I unplugged these two devices down here. We have two spare, but we are going to have to change up the route of this cable. It used to run across here. 
but I think we're going to have to connect to the dense cable up the top here just to give us some more channels and that also means we have to move the muffler hatch out of the way since this has to be clear. So let's do the muffler hatches on the side of these machines. It's a bit unconventional but whatever works really. And then all we have to do is fluid export bus, request our lubricant, I just cleared it, request lubricant in here, the reservoir hatch we have up top and then output hatch and this is where the ender tank is going to go. So it should already run the recipe unless we need some uh, circuitry still burned out, unless we need a circuit number. We don't need a circuit number but I completely forgot about stone dust. Let's grab ourselves a stocking input bus. And for this, I noticed we're missing the recipe for the advance card and also the acceleration card, which we have crafted so many of manually, so I want to make sure we add the recipe for that. We'll just add it to our pin list. Okay, it took a second to get crafted. I was a, a little bit worried there that um, the recipe got stuck because there is a few that I haven't tested since we moved our assembling machines last episode. And this was one of those recipes for the stocking input bus. But let's request stone dust, which we make from ore processing. Uh, that's the wrong stone dust. This is the one we want. Let's turn on the machine and we should see drilling fluid. Yes, perfect. And let's make sure the one in the bottom is back on as well. Awesome, so now after adding the ender tank and a muffler upgrade, we have completed the first machine on our list today. Yeah, let's also make sure we add the recipe here for the advance card, the acceleration card, Let's also grab the maintenance hatch recipe here as well, which is going to be circuit 2 in the assembling machine. We do have refined glue, but I don't think we have the duct tape, which is circuit 3 and raw carbon mesh silicon rubber sheets. I think these are the ones that we have for circuit crafting. Uh, so these are going to go in the assembler 2 slot. We don't have any space left. i just seen raw carbon mesh though. So we do have that. Maybe not silicon rubber sheets. Yeah, I think... I think silicon rubber sheets is the one we have on passive, but we're going to remove it from our pass a passive process and we're going to switch to on-demand later on today. And the reason for that I'll explain later on today, but first of all, you might have noticed that for the acceleration card and advanced card recipes, these are not done in the, excel in the assembling machine. In fact, they're both done inside crafting grids, which means that we're going to need some molecular assemblers yeah, it's about time, but check this out for the recipe. It takes an EV assembling machine for each molecular assembler, which we can manage at this stage of the game, but this is basically the reason why we don't have them yet. I hope that we have the circuits crafted at least, because that takes a very long time to craft. Uh, we don't have any motors left. How many can we make? Nine. You know what? Let's, add, let's also add the recipe for the motor as well. These do have assembling machines. Um, and we might as well add the rest of the motors as well. I did add the IV motor when I was making up the loot bags. But we also need the HV motor. Yeah, we have the EV one. Let's get the MV one. That's the wrong motor. And then finally the LV motor, which I think has two recipes. One uses steel and one uses iron. Uh, we might as well make sure we use the iron one because that cuts out some assembling crafting steps. And you know what? For LV, we're going to do this like... 16 motors at a time. All of these don't need any circuit numbers. They're just going to go in the assembler zero Which is uh, going to fit nicely underneath the pump recipes here So we should now be able to auto craft all the motors. Uh, we're still waiting on that 16k 16k storage component to get the, the pattern capacity card for the assembling machine and something is stuck over here It seems to be the compressor which I did move around I actually uh, managed to free up two large processing factories on the end here, which used to be the laser engraver and the, the fluid solidifier. But I was able to share some recipes here and the, the fluid solidifier is now in this one. And we now share the compressor, polarizer in, and lathe in the same machine. Um, I have a feeling I forgot to switch this back on. And that's exactly the case. Okay, perfect. Any second now, as long as the cotton machine does its job, which we still have to upgrade today. Yeah, there it goes. It should be in the assembling machine now. The circuit assembling machine now. There it is. And that allows us to craft the pattern capacity cards. Which I can never find the recipe for. These ones, I don't... Uh, you know what, let's add the recipe for this as well, because I use this quite often. Another advanced card. And we're short an interface here as well. Yeah, there's our pattern capacity card. And this is going to go in the assembler 
2, Assembler Circuit 2, to allow us to add more patterns to the same interface, which will get the maintenance hatch and the duct tape in here. Yeah, let's get a pattern for the pattern capacity card and finish crafting the molecular assemblers. Let's test out the recipe here for the motors as well. These, sh these should be no problem for us. Um, basically everything up to the IV motors should be no problem. This is just some black bronze, some electrum. Yeah, all of this stuff is not really an issue for us anymore. Um, it's just basically the, the IV motors, which are still quite expensive because it takes advanced glue and we do not have this automated yet nor phosphorus doped wafers. There's still a few issues we have to iron out with this. But regardless, there is our four assembling machines. Oh, we're short some, short some robot arms. Oh, I didn't craft nearly enough here. Maybe I should add the recipes for all this stuff because there is assembler recipes for the robot arms as well. Yeah, we really should, we really should add them. Let's add all the robot arms as well. Okay, LV, MV, let's make sure we have the right circuits. We want uh, integrated circuits. HV and EV should have the right circuit here. I don't actually know if leaving it on any EV circuit will work, um, but just uh, I think I will change it over since we have access to the cheapest EV circuits anyway. We're always going to be using quantum processors, so we might as well exactly specify which one we want it to use. And these again will place an assembler zero right underneath the motors. And these are actually backwards. It should be EV, should be LV, MV, HV, EV, IV. And just since we're adding everything else, we may as well also include the recipes here for the pistons. So again, LV, yeah, it's like motors to craft the pistons and then the pistons you use to craft the robot arms, uh, along with uh, the various metals for every tier and then the various different cables and usually a circuit as well. So we use these pretty often, especially in machine crafts. It's going to be super nice to be able to auto-craft all this stuff from this point forward. If we can find enough assembler slots. I'm sure we can make it work though. Applied crafting. Alright, so I went ahead and fixed the assemblers. We got all the patterns included inside. Uh, I had to add another assembler circuit zero interface, but yeah. I also went ahead and wired in a space similar to what we have on the other side here for the CPUs. But on this side, it's going to be for the molecular assemblers. I think we might have to switch up the way that this room is configured, but we'll do that once we have some more molecular assemblers. But for now, I'm basically just going to do that and we'll just give two interfaces for each one. Of course, there's way more efficient ways you can set up molecular assemblers, but you basically just want to surround them with as many interfaces as you can give them. So I did request a few more interfaces. They should be finished crafting. And yeah, for now, I think... Not that. I think for now, we'll just do... Maybe something like this. It's not going to look the best, but again, yeah, we'll switch it up later on. This should give us plenty of capacity for for uh, crafting recipes. So if you're not familiar with molecular assemblers, it's basically just the way that Applied Energistics will auto-craft um, three by three recipes for you. So like there's a three by three crafting grid and you can give the pattern to the interface. Most of you guys know this by now. But um, yeah, when we request any of these three cards, it's gonna send the items into the molecular assembler and then it's gonna craft them in the grid as specified by the interface pattern and then it's going to be automatically sent back to storage and complete the craft. So let's try it out here with the first acceleration card. Technically the best practice is to do like crafters making crafters so you can make more, but we'll be a bit unconventional today and we'll make our first, <laughs> first pattern with the acceleration card and it does in fact work. Perfect. Um, and in fact, you know what? We can even add acceleration cards into these molecular assemblers which will speed up the crafting speed. Yeah, which is really, really good if you're doing multiple recipes at once because these things are pretty slow. And in general, you do want to do assembler recipes wherever you can because the assembler is much faster and you can overclock that, whereas these will only go so fast. But it's uh, nice to have those for 
um, things which don't have assembler recipes. All right, so by this point, we've fixed our drilling fluid automation. We've fixed several different recipes. Next on the list, um, I think I want to tackle the chemical bath next, which is for the quantum eyes and quantum stars. And we use this in a bunch of EV crafts mainly. We also use it in field generators as well. But yeah, it's, it's quite important that we have the ability to use the chemical bath. And of course, we want to switch to the multi-block version which is going to be the ore washing plant. This can either be an ore washer, a simple washer, or a chemical bath, depending on the way that you set it up. Let's remove these from the pin list. So we have two of these machines in ore processing, but let's make one more here for recipes on demand. Okay, there's the machine controller. Let's also grab some wash plant casings. I think we do have the recipe for this. And uh, yeah, we can now even request our maintenance hatches, which we should try out. And the rest should be pretty simple. Um, do we have any spare... IV energy hatches. I'm really hoping we do. Yes, we have one left, so we'll run this at IV. And this chemical plant is one of the bigger multi-blocks, so we'll place it on the first floor here, the ground floor. And I did also move the chemical plant over from crop processing over there, since we use this one on demand. And of course the other one is still used for nitrobenzene, but yeah, the chemical bath, I think we're going to place next to this one. Alright, so we got the machine mostly built here, but because the recipe takes both fluids and items, we're going to have to set up our little subnet system, like we did with the assembling machines and the autoclave. As well as this chemical plant, actually, I had to set up the little subnet system here, instead of using the ingredient buffers. Um, and unfortunately, we have to do the buses and hatches on the bottom side. I did have it wired on top here, but that is not allowed for the multi-block to form. So yeah, for this one again, we want to do interface on interface and then we'll set up our little subnet and then we have to provide this with power which we can do with uh, quartz fiber and then we also need an output bus which we'll do on the other side i suppose it's kind of unfortunate that you can't have greg tech power and applied energistics in the same block space like you can with uh end for example it makes things a lot more bulky in general and we still don't have a multi-block here what are we missing here we have output bus, input hatch, input bus, energy hatch, IV, muffler hatch, uh, machine controller, maintenance hatch. Unless the machine controller is on the wrong... Yeah, this is in the wrong place. It's supposed to be in the middle, right here. That should form the multi-block, right? Yes, perfect. It took a second there, but yeah, we got it formed. And uh, yeah, now we just have to add our... Storage bus on the input, input bus, and uh, fluid storage bus on the input hatch. So this dual interface on the main net is going to be named chemical plant. We want to do batch mode, turn the machine on, come back to the overworld so we can collect the recipe patterns, which is going to be in here. Yeah, wait, did I call this the chemical plant? I did. We want this to be chemical bath. And this is the, the one that will get, again, the recipes in here test the recipe here for the quantum eye it takes radon it takes eyes of ender radon of course we have on passive and in fact we should have quite a significant amount of radon by now yeah our tank is full four million that's perfect and it's going to start to cash in the output hatch i think uh first of all let's make sure this works um we do have to have it on the right mode as well like so and now it should start the recipe Assuming that everything has... Yeah, we've got Eyes of Ender, we've got Radon. It should start here, unless it also needs water. Uh, it does, for some reason it needs water, okay. So we'll add a reservoir hatch. Another recipe that we're missing here for the water reservoir. We should have the rest of the stuff. We have the pumps, we have the machine casing, we have fluid pipe. And then, uh, yeah, the reservoir hatch we should have. We'll add this to our molecular assemblers and request our reservoir hatch. When we switched this thing a couple of episodes ago to the full radon, or to the full plutonium, it's actually less efficient than doing the tiny piles. Um, yeah, we've got half a million in here. It's actually less efficient. So we switched from tiny piles of uranium-238 to the full pile, but we also don't get quite as much radon this way, so I might switch it back. 
I'm not too sure yet, but uranium, I mean, it's not like we're struggling for uranium, I don't think. Yeah, we, ha we still have quite a bit of uranium dust, and we're only going to get more as we move the miners, which is something I want to get done today as well. Yeah, it's not a massive difference, but I think I will still switch it back. Um, maybe some point this episode, let's give it a reservoir hatch. That should fill it with water, or distilled water, I think, for this multi-block. Oh yeah, and then it has to convert regular water over here into distilled water. It does take a while, but once it's filled, we don't have to ever touch this again because of the reservoir hatch. Uh, oh, it was actually enough to run the recipe. Even without it all converting, really. Um... Yeah, it cleared the crafting screen, which is all we need. <laughs> and we can now craft our Quantum Eyes and Quantum Stars, which, um, yeah, again, we use for Cubit Wafers, and we use this in Circuits. And we use the Quantum Stars in a lot of the IV recipes. I think I might have said EV before. And, yeah, it's used in a bunch of different stuff we haven't even looked at at this point in the game, like LV stuff, or LUV stuff, uh, rather, in the assembly line. But, yeah, this is another machine off of our list, and we can move on to the next one. But none of the rest of the machines we have crafted just yet, nor do we have the ability to craft. Um, at least not automatically, and that's kind of the name of the game today. So, yeah, of the ones we're missing, we need a forge hammer, a cotton machine, a macerator, and an alloy smelter. I think I might not have mentioned the alloy smelter, but yes, we do need one of these things. And it is a multi-block machine, we're going to switch to all multi-blocks. I just realised this also takes coils. Additionally, we're also going to have to make use of our alloy blast smelter. And this is a unique machine in that, well, we do have one setup here ready to be automated, but it's unique in the sense that it will output fluid after we insert dusts. And yeah, as the name suggests, it will make us various alloys, some of which we need to craft our machines today. To maximize flexibility though, we're gonna uh, fluid solidify next to the ABS and we'll turn all fluids it makes into ingots. And then from there, we'll convert into specific parts that we need in other machines. So for example, let's say we need gears, the alloy blast smelter is going to make the alloy. It will be automatically converted into an ingot sent back to our AE system. And then we'll set up a recipe pattern to turn the ingot into a gear inside the extruder, for example. But for some of the ABS outputs, it might also be like a bolt or a screw or a gear or a long rod or a plate, or maybe the ingot, or maybe even the fluid. So yeah, I went through the four machines we need for today, and I encoded all the recipes for the GT++ alloys in the ABS, and then all of the other recipes we require to be able to craft the machines. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> and then it was just a matter of going through and making sure we had all the parts, and I went ahead and assembled the four machines. The four chammer, the cotton machine, the maceration stack, and the alloy smeller. Alright guys, well it feels like we're actually starting to get somewhere in this game, <laughs> after so long. It feels like we're actually starting to get some auto crafting up and running. Something that would have taken maybe like two or three hundred hours in Nomi Factory is taking... How many are we on here? 1572? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There was a tiny amount of AFK between last episode and this episode, but yeah, we're racking up the hours in this world here. 
But yeah, we are slowly getting there at, at threefold's pace. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you guys always say I'm so fast at playing this game, but actually it's it's not fast at all. So if you're trying, if you're like, if you watch these videos and you compare your own progress to mine, just remember how much is actually cut out of the videos and uh, don't be discouraged if it takes you like a week to get some infrastructure in place. Um, because more than likely I've spent all night trying to get things built. <laughs> um, but yeah, we have our alloy smelter, we have our forge hammer, we have our cutting machine down here. And we have our maceration stack on the other side. And yeah, although these machines all look a bit different, they all function basically the same way as the existing machines that we have. So yeah, we just have to form the multi-block with the, you know, the maintenance hatch, muffler hatch, all the minimum casings, and then give it the input bus, give it the recipe patterns, which we still have to add here. The cutting machine is a bit different in that it does take lubricant for pretty much every recipe, I think inside the cutting machine, all 2,500 of them. But because we have lubricant on passive, we can just supply it um, yeah, passively to the machine via the fluid export bus. So we're just uh, supplying lubricant here into the input hatch. And then we, we only have to supply the items via the patterns, which is gonna be our next order of business. We have to move over all of the recipe patterns. So all of these cutting machine ones here are gonna be placed inside our brand new machine multi-block. But you might notice that they were previously inside a clean room. And for some of these recipes, like for example, the wafers here. Yeah, these wafers, which are made um, in chemical reactors, we have the recipe for this already. But when you make the wafer, you always have to cut it down. And the cotton machine recipe specifically needs to be done inside a clean room. However, the multi-block counts as a clean room. So when you run the recipe inside here, you can bypass the requirement of um, the recipe needing a clean room for it to be cut. Um, and so therefore we no longer actually need our uh, clean room anymore, at least not at this stage of the game. So yeah, along with the energy discount that we get from these things and the speed increase over the single blocks, that is another benefit to switching to multi-block machines. We can also go ahead and transfer the patterns from the single block alloy smelter. We only have four for now, so it wasn't super high on the priority list, but yeah, I guess we, we do now have the multi-block, so we can add to it in the future. The Forge Hammer, um, we do have quite a lot of recipes still in the overworld. Yeah, right here, what is this? 16 recipes, I think? Let's make sure we name our interfaces as well to keep things nice and organized. And we'll add the recipe patterns for everything here. Again, this is mostly used for long rods, and I might also multiply some of these recipes, since before I knew that we were that they were in LV machines, which is why I was only doing it one at a time. But if I remember right, most of these machines do get a, a baseline parallel processing speed. Aha, interesting. So this industrial sledgehammer depends on the tier of anvil that's inside. So right now we have, a, I think, a steel anvil in there. Yeah, we have a steel anvil in the middle. Steel is tier two. We could upgrade to dark steel or thomium for tier three. We don't have enough void metal for tier 4 though, I know that much. But I think an upgrade would influence the speed, the energy usage, and the parallel amount for the machine. If I'm reading this right, I think it's, yeah, it's tier times anvil tier times 8. I'm not sure if tier means energy tier, or if it means anvil tier. How much do we have? 99, that should be enough for an anvil. I think it's uh, 31 for an anvil. And I have some uh, fluid extractors, fluid solidifiers here specifically to make an anvil, and we're just doing this manually. Uh, so I don't have the recipe set up for this, but... You know what, since we have the thomium, we might as well go ahead and make the anvil to make this faster. Oh yeah, of course, I didn't even check the recipe. <laughs> of course it's a Thomcraft recipe, and we don't have the research yet for it either. Alright, there's the research. It does give us warp, so questionable if that was worth it or not but it does just take a bunch of a whole bunch of thomium and some v all right there's our thomium anvil and since we went through the effort to upgrade we might as well multiply all the recipes as well but i think we're just going to go um, up to eight parallel for most of these recipes by default and if we need to request more it's going to obviously place more in the input boss and it will do it all at once i think there's also a new feature coming in gtnh in the next update which allows you to optimize your recipe patterns um, so there's no need to actually multiply things correctly to get the um yeah it's meant to like optimize tps 
I don't understand it fully, but I'll uh, definitely investigate when we update the pack. And the next update should be right around the corner as well, it's currently in beta, so I don't suspect it's going to be that long before the full release. Alright, so we got our patterns, let's also upgrade the anvil. Not sure what we're going to do with a, a steel anvil. Incomplete structure still. Unless, unless this is like twisted the wrong way. Does it need to be facing this way maybe? Weird. Weird. <laughs> At least it did form. And now we know, you have to have the anvil facing this way, not facing this way. So we can also upgrade the maceration stack here as well. As you can see, it's currently tier 1. And did I put the recipe patterns in here already? I did. Okay. Let's actually just test this out. A uh, thousand quart sand, which is just macerating regular sand. And it should do it in parallel. Oh yeah, look at that. It does four operations at once. I'm not sure why it's a variable amount there. That is also extremely loud. Let's get a muffler for that. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's variable amounts, but we can also upgrade the maceration stack. Yeah, we can give the machine a maceration chip upgrade, which does cost ZPM circuits. We've not made ZPM circuits as far as I remember. And it also needs an upgrade to its casing as well. We need to give it maceration stack casing instead of um, stable titanium casing. The stable titanium that we have on it right now is pretty cheap. It's just titanium plates and frame boxes, which is titanium rods. But the other upgraded maceration casing is the only one that used to exist, which is why we have 64 LV macerators here at ore processing. Um, since in previous versions of the game, you used to have to craft this as like the baseline to get a maceration stack. And this costs a lot of palladium and platinum. So yeah, the maceration stack we probably don't need to upgrade here, but I would like to upgrade the one at ore processing pretty soon. So we got the forge hammer, we got the mixer, we got the maceration stack, we got the chemical bath, we have got the cutting machines inside the inside of here. We got both of these cutting machines. I realized we had a spare cutting machine here, and so I didn't have to craft an, an extra one for the multi-block controller but it won't be the last cutting machine that we craft, so we'll make use of this eventually. I noticed there's still some circuit assembler recipes in here, so I'm going to move these over. I think we're going to have to adjust the recipes here as well, because inside the clean room we were automatically supplying the fluid, in this case soldering alloy, but we're no longer doing that inside our processing array, so we have to also specify that we want to send the fluid in the pattern. And by the way, if you didn't know, you can shift scroll wheel to change to any available option, which is also valid for the recipe, and yeah, in this case we want to use SMDs. Fine copper wire, soldering alloy wire, central processing units, plastic circuit boards. That also reminds me, we do have to change our uh, circuit production as well. But let's adjust these recipes. Okay, so I think I adjusted everything here. We've got the LV circuit, MV circuit, HV circuit, EV circuit, IV circuit, LUV circuit. Oh yeah, and we're missing ULV as well, which is uh, this one, I think. And then, yeah, a whole bunch of other miscellaneous things for the alvearies, uh, for like bees, for forestry, and then the applied energistics storage components, along with a bunch of other things for open computers, which is also made in the circuit assemblers. And this machine right now is actually currently one of our biggest bottlenecks, but the upgrade is going to be... The circuit assembly line, which is made in the regular assembly line. So this the regular assembly line is this guy right here, which is not the same as a circuit assembly line. Despite looking almost identical, they are in fact different. <laughs> and they are different multi-blocks. So we need the regular assembly line first before we can craft the circuit assembly line, which is unsurprisingly a multi-block specifically designed to craft circuits. And it will give us like parallel... Um, and yeah, parallel recipes and speed increases. So we want to get this as, as soon as we can. But there's a few other things we have to do first. One of those being to make sure we can craft all of our circuit components here. And now that we have all the machines that we've crafted today, this should be relatively simple as... Um, yeah, I mean, like, this is an autoclave recipe, right? Molten epoxy we have on passive. Carbon dust we're making from various locations. Um, raw carbon fiber is another autoclave recipe, so we'll do all this on demand. This is a maceration recipe for wood pulp. We have alloy smelters. Well, we just built an alloy smelter. We have assembling machines for phenolic circuit boards. 
so we can add a recipe for this as well. Fluid solidifier for silicon rubber sheets. We don't have this set up yet, but we can definitely add it. Again, polyvinyl chloride sheets, which is um, the same plate recipe inside the fluid solidifier. We of course have polyvinyl chloride on passive, we have polytetrafluoroethylene on passive, and we have molten rubber on passive, and all we need is the plates here. And conveniently, as I mentioned earlier, we were able to free up two large processing factories, since we're now fluid solidifying the rotors in this one. So what we're going to do is specify this as our fluid solidifier for ingots. So all we need to do is request a dual interface. It takes still a while to craft, and there's a couple of steps here to make a dual interface, as you can see. Um, but it's so nice finally having things fully on passive, uh, such that we can just request it whenever we need it. And uh, raw materials we're pretty good on right now, but they're still not infinite, so we do need to be a bit careful when we're doing really large projects. We need to plan for it. But yeah, most of the things we can now afford, um, and all that it costs is patience. <laughs> so yeah, all we have to do here is grab a plate mold that goes inside the input bus, and we want circuit number 22 for the fluid solidifier. And this is going to be machine type C. And then we can hook up the dual interface to the input hatch, plug it in. This will be fluid solidifier, solidifier plate. Wait, no, not plate. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna do this as ingots, and we're gonna maximize flexibility, similar to what we done for the alloy blast smelter. So although we do need plates for the circuits, we're gonna um, yeah we're gonna solidify it into ingots. So we should have an ingot mold here somewhere. We do. Yeah, again, despite the fact that you can see here we need uh, rubber rings and plates, and we need polytetrafluoroethylene bars, which is ingots, um, and I think we also need silicon rubber rings as well. And by the way, the rubber rings are used in the pump recipes, and you can fluid solidify straight into rings, which is technically more efficient, but it also cuts out the amount of machines that we need, especially since the large processing factories are very expensive and you can only fluid solidify it into one type of item at once, um, at least in this version of the game. In the next update, we're going to have a solution to this, but for now, we have to be smart with how we use our fluid solidifiers. So, yeah, we're going to put everything into ingots, and then from there, we can craft the rings, which we can do inside an extruder. So we'll solidify into silicon rubber bars and then into rings inside the extruder, and we'll do this uh, 64 at a time. Same thing for regular rubber. I guess we'll do 128 at once. <laughs> and same thing for polytetrafluoroethylene bars. Um, yeah, this is going to be fluid to item, and this is going to go in the machine that we just set up. So I guess we'll do this uh, 64 bars at a time. And we're out of patterns. I did add the recipe for the blank pattern. So let's request some of those. Yeah, this is going to go in our brand new machine here, or brand new newly configured machine for the ingots, the fluid solidifier. We'll need also the rubber rings and the polytetrafluoroethylene bars here as well. And maybe a couple of other solidifier into ingots. That is not going to happen automatically out of the ABS. So let's test out the recipe here. Again, the main benefit to doing this is we can request recipes which require more than we buffer. Um, and because we're buffering 4 million polytetrafluoroethylene here, we can fluid solidify in that into loads and loads of ingots, more than the two stacks that we buffer in the drawer in the overworld. So I think as long as we... Yeah, it's done already. <laughs> and you can see that speed is not an issue at all. That This is definitely not going to be a bottleneck for us. So it's perfectly okay to have this on demand, especially since we have the fluid on passive. Although I do know of some GTNH players who have all of their chemicals on demand. It's not not a playstyle for me personally, <laughs> but apparently you can you can make it work with the speed that you can get some of the machines in this game. So it is definitely a valid playstyle, but yeah, I definitely prefer having at least the chemicals on passive. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to add the recipes for the rest of the circuit components here. So polyethylene, silicon rubber. I already forgot the rest, so I should probably go and collect those items physically and then pin them. That's probably the best way to do it. And also make use of this this interface terminal instead of flying over there every time. Solidifier. Yeah, here. We want it in this one. And these will go inside of the extruder. Right here. Oh, 
Alright guys, well not too long later, we should have all the recipes encoded by now. I added a few extra, just for good measure, for some of the things that we don't necessarily use as often. But yeah, we should have the capability to craft those by now. I also spent some time here in the valley, in the keyhole, in the overworld, just trying to remove some of the cabling, so I was able to recycle a lot of the machines that we used to use. And so yeah, a lot of the redundant systems have now been removed. And so taking a look at our auto-crafting room now, it's a shell of its former self. <laughs> All that remains is the chicken, who is still stuck in this catwalk. He's been stuck here forever. He's not stuck anymore, that's for sure. <laughs> I think there's another one down here as well. Yeah, there's a second one down here. Should we keep him around? I mean... <laughs> what do you think, chicken? You want to stay here? You want to move to the the new base? <laughs> he's just, he's giving me the look. He's like, don't you dare. <laughs> don't you dare. I am so tempted right now. Wait, he took damage. How did he take damage? <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we got everything removed from here since it's now, all the functionality now belongs in our new base. And uh, the most important reason why I actually done this today was so that we can unload all of these chunks. So we had to load the overworld to keep our applied energistic system online. Yeah, if you didn't know, at least in GTNH, you have to have your whole applied energistic system loaded at all times. So because we had some connections here in the overworld, we had to keep all of the cables loaded. Otherwise, it would blink out our AE system, even in the void dimension. Um, however, I think we are now safe to remove this. I'm not sure actually what is on the end of this line here. I know this is our terminal P2P, which powers these guys here. Um, so we're no longer going to have terminals here anymore if we remove that cable, which I am going to do. But it also splits off of here in a couple of different directions. Like from the quantum link chamber, it splits off to the right hand side here. And I think this goes down to our clean room. Yeah, 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 this powers the wireless connector and that gives us the channels inside of here, which technically we don't need anymore, we can remove all this. Yeah, along with this right hand side, it also goes to the left and it goes down here. And I think it goes down the wall. Yeah, all of this is actually cable, there's facades here. And, uh, oh yeah, this used to, yeah, that's right, this used to be the cable which powered the AE CPUs, right, which used to sit right above these cables. That's right, yeah, okay, so they're actually redundant, we don't need them anymore. And uh, yeah, of course, all of ore processing is gone, so we don't need any of that. We also don't need any power connections here either, if we're not having applied energistics here. So we can remove all of the turbines, I think I'll move these between episodes, which means we can remove the battery and we can reclaim all of these batteries here and use this to upgrade our multi-block battery in the new base. So I'll... Yeah, I'll, I'll move the power system between episodes. There was also one more cable here. Um, I think it was a power cable. That is... I don't know what that's doing. <laughs> um, yeah, there was a power cable which goes down here. I don't know if it just feeds into the input. And it looks like... Yeah, it does. Okay, that feeds into the output of the battery. So this doesn't really go anywhere. So yeah, believe it or not, it was actually 20 episodes ago since I rebooted this series. Um, I rebooted episode 49 and we're now on 69. So 20 episodes to move the whole base to the new the new base in the void, and we can now remove this quantum link chamber. Finally. <laughs> Finally. It feels like I've been doing this project forever, and now we can start to focus on new infrastructure and upgrading the things that we have. And uh, yeah, let's also go ahead and remove all the, the chunk-loaded chunks here. Oh, this is going to be so nice. Yes, I don't know if we're going to feel any difference with uh, server performance, but not that performance has been an issue, to be honest. Um, like, we've stayed at 20 TPS. I think we're still at 20 TPS. Yeah, I mean, I think the game is running pretty well. I haven't noticed anything other than the occasional FPS dip, but um, that's just when I'm, like, loading in a bunch of tile entities. And I think, actually, um, maybe increasing the view distance of the server is going to help with that since it doesn't have to load in and out so frequently, so I might I might increase the view distance or the render distance for the server. Um, I have a feeling that might help, but we're also getting some more performance upgrades to GTNH. Um, they're working on an optimization mod, 
If you guys know of the mod Sodium from the recent versions of the game, then it's going to be a similar mod to that and will replace Optifine and Fastcraft, which we use in 1.7 here in GTNH. Since we're in very, a very old version of the game, there's a lot of optimizations that are still yet to see this version. Um, so yeah, super excited for Angelica. I think it's also going to at some point come with shader support as well. I don't think that's going to be soon. But eventually, I think they do plan on having shader support as well. And also server utilities, which we use for chunk loading. Which is, uh, server utilities, by the way, is the specific rewrite of FTB utilities. Which is what we used to use. But um, yeah, there's now a specific mod uh, written specifically for GTNH called server utilities. Server utilities is also coming in the next update as default in the pack. Right now you have to add it manually and if you're looking for any details on that I just wrote a guide on my own discord which you can find in the pins and if you guys need any other help with an installation or or the mod pack in general then don't be afraid to ask in discord. I'm always around to try to help you out if I can and of course there's many other people who can help you out. So yeah Angelica is is definitely one I'm looking forward to along with all the other updates. This mod pack is is still growing after all these years. Oh man, there's so many things to look forward to. Unfortunately, we didn't get around to moving the miners. Um, so yeah, and we also didn't get around to making any more machines for ore processing. But I think we're gonna leave that for future episodes as this one is getting a little bit lengthy. So we are gonna wrap up right here. And there's another chicken down here still. <laughs> yeah, this chicken here still, still remains, but uh, yeah, we managed to get through all the backlog, so we're now just working on any new ores which we get from bees. And uh, yeah, it's basically just this is the bottleneck right now. The processing speed of this chemical reactor. Um, and we might have to add some more storage. I've been keeping an eye on this, but it's also almost about time we start to add some more bees as well. Um, a lot of you guys have recommended several bees um, and lots of them I would like to get. Lots of them are still missing, of course, so... I might spend a bit of time here between episodes trying to breed up some more bees. I'm not sure yet, but there's so many different things to do here. So yeah, I think we made some really good progress this episode. We got a lot of the infrastructure moved. Of course, we unloaded all of the overworld and we built a couple of new machines here in auto crafting. And it's now starting to really feel like we can, we can get things automated. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that is going to do us for today. I'm just about to move these turbines behind me to the new base, along with cleaning up the rest of the cable. But I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all very soon for episode number 70.